it's out there with ladies to impress. It's easy to do, just follow these steps. One, cut a hole in a box. <laughs> Put your junk in that box. <laughs> Make a hope in the box. And that's the way you do it. <laughs> All right, guys, we are back for another Marvel Legends mystery box. This is the fourth in our series of mystery boxes. And if you like what we're doing, check out the other videos. I've got a link right up here to check that out. And if you dig what we're doing as a channel, if you're somebody who loves the intersection of comic history and action figures, think about giving us a like and subscribe to our channel so that you can continue to have fun along with us as we go along. So this box came straight out of the closet. I don't know what's in there. I just know that it's pretty heavy. So I'm hoping that we get a bunch of cool figures. So let's go ahead and check it out. Oh, we got some big boys right off the bat. So starting off, here is Toy Biz's Sasquatch figure. Now, he's obviously a little worse for wear. He's missing an arm. But this was the, like I said, this was from Toy Biz's line, not the Hasbro Sasquatch. Hasbro did a Build-A-Figure Sasquatch, but this one uh, came out as a single carded figure and it's awesome. This is the one that I actually keep in my Alpha Flight display down in the Secret Lounge because, stop me if you've heard this one before, I think it's more accurate to the original creator, John Byrne's art. That head sculpt looks like it came straight off of a John Byrne page, so good stuff. And let's grab this monster while we're at it. Obviously, this is the elusive headless juggernaut figure. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of that, but you know, hopefully with any luck, we'll find the head down in the rest of this box. But that bad boy's got some weight to him. I mean, that is a monster of an action figure. Uh, oh, let's stick with Alpha Flight. This is Guardian, the leader of Alpha Flight. And um, this was a Toy Biz figure, too, I'm pretty sure. Or maybe it came out right at the very beginning of Has... No, with those fingers and those little grippy fingers, that's definitely Toy Biz. This is one where Hasbro actually has passed Toy Biz. Now, this is a good figure. It's got a great head sculpt, really does look like Guardian. It's on a good frame. It has those funky Toy Biz ball-jointed hips that we all love to hate. Uh, good figure, but one that has been surpassed by what Hasbro has put out. Okay, here's somebody that is in bad need of an update. Now, with the Captain Marvel movie, we got lots of Carol Danvers figures. Some really, really good ones from Hasbro. This, though, is Toy Biz's original Miss Marvel. And when I think about Carol Danvers as a member of the Avengers, this is the outfit that I think of. Now... This figure's showing its age. She's got kind of those terrible shoulders, those terrible hips, but all in all, still a really solid Carol Danvers, Miss Marvel figure. Oh yeah, look at this. Look how good that is. So this is the Toy Biz Ghost Rider. His jaw closes. That is just a really, really solid action figure. I like the fact that he's thin. You know, not all of our action figures have to be these super huge bulky types. Some of them can be just like, I mean, he's a skeleton, right? So, I mean, he's not gonna be huge. I mean, look, you can see his clavicles and his sternum right there coming out of his jacket. His jacket has like a little bit of a rubbery material right here. That is a sweet, sweet figure from early in the Toy Biz day. So that's a, this is at least a 15 year old action figure. Falcon. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, this is like the variant. This is like the Toy Biz variant Falcon because the, the original Falcon that they produced had the, the 70s open chest. So this was the, uh, the variant, the harder to find version with the more modern costume. Now, I don't know who thinks that open sides for some under boob action is, is their idea of modern, but this Sam Wilson Good head sculpt. This is the variant of that. So we'll, we might have to hang on to that bad boy. Ah, bullseye. Now, I grant you that he's a bad guy, but that is one ugly sucker. I have always found this to be one of the just less attractive action figures ever produced. Let's grab, let's grab his enemy, Matt Murdock. This, I know this one, this came from the 2006 face-off line. So 
This Matt Murdock was actually packaged with a Kingpin figure. We found that in some of our other mystery boxes, that's why I remember it. But these face-off figures were some of the first ones to have the the mask, the removed mask kind of hanging there. And that's a cool look. Uh, you've got the glasses, you've got the, the head sculpt. Again, I don't know who thinks that that's what a human being's shoulders look like, even a, a superhero. Uh, but outside of that, it's a pretty good figure. Here's one I don't like. I have never liked this original Toy, Bat, Toy Biz Wonder Man figure. Some of it may be because of all this rough hewn texture on his shirt. I'm not really sure what the what the idea, what what that has to do with Wonder Man at all. Uh, I speak for everyone in my age group that says we want a safari jacket Wonder Man. Hasbro, if you're listening, that's the one that we really want because eh, I don't know. This this that's a pretty weak figure. Oh, it's interesting. So I wonder, actually, let's pull these back up. I bet you, so this is Black Panther. I'm pretty sure Black Panther came out before Wonder Man. And you see he has that texture on his arms, on his legs. I bet you they just simply used the exact same torso for Wonder Man. And that's why it has this same texture. Now, at the time, there was an artist uh, named Mark Teixeira who was doing the art for Black Panther. And he had that rough kind of look, his inking was really, really rough and it had this this sort of feel to it. So, and, and those claws that are on Black Panther's hand there are really reminiscent of his art style. So I bet Toy Biz was trying to, you know, really kind of come, come at it from that specific artist perspective, which is one of the greatest things that Toy Biz did. You know, they would model their action figures off of a specific artist style, and I think that's probably what they were doing with this Black Panther here. Oh, let's see. Yeah, here we go. See, this is the non-variant Falcon. So this is your this is your 1970s, 1980s open shirt Falcon. Still a good figure. Still the Falcon that I prefer down in my display in my in my main display case in the Secret Lounge. I have another one of these guys down in the Secret Lounge too. This is Helmet Zemo, the uh, older, the like 1940s Baron Zemo figure. If you watch Falcon and Winter Soldier, you'll notice that uh, Daniel Bruhl always wore a jacket with a big fuzzy collar like this as a nice callback to the design of, of Baron Zemo. It's just, and it was purple also. Nice touch that they, that they did on that show. Well, here's a... Good grief. It's like a decapitated wrecker. I hope, hopefully we'll find his head with Juggernaut's head. But again, really big figure. Hasbro uh, have these supersized villain figures. They got really good heft to them. Let's venture into the world of Thor. Okay. I think this is like a, a King Thor. He's got the longer hair. He has like the loincloth type of cape, a little bit of a different different costume. Really cool knee pads there. Head sculpt, has the beard and a little difference to the helmet and mask. It's kind of nice. I like that. Compared against Toy Biz's very first Thor figure. So this figure took a bunch of heat because he doesn't have a lot of torso articulation. I mean, it's, I mean, gosh, that's still that's a pretty classic Thor. I mean, that's that's what Thor looks like. Um, but at the time, Toy Biz was also doing wrestling figures. And look, they weren't afraid to mix and match some parts. And so I think that this torso and these arms actually came off of a wrestling figure. And that was people why people fussed about it. But that is a very, very Thor head sculpt. I mean, that just screams Norse God to me. I like it. Another really cool addition that Toy Biz gave us was Deathlock. Just look at how sweet that head sculpt is. Now Hasbro gave us a more recent Deathlock, and it does. It has better proportions than, again, we're still dealing with some of the goofy shoulders here. He's got this hose coming out of his uh, left nipple. I have nipples, Greg. Could you milk me? Uh, but one thing that Toy Biz was better at than Hasbro 
were some of these metallic paint jobs. And on a figure that's like half cyborg, rocking out that metallic paint really does make a difference. And they've got it on the eye as well. So you get to see that as part of the part of the eyeball. Nice. Now you wanna talk about sculpting. Look at this masterpiece, man thing. You know, totally unique sculpt only for this figure. He has tree branches coming out of his back. And when you look at toy lines like DC Universe Classics, even the new Hasbro ones, you know, they sculpt kind of a generic body that they're then able to use for multiple figures. And I don't have a problem with that. I, I mean, I think that's great. A lot of times it works perfectly. Toy Biz was like, nah, we're gonna make Man-Thing and he, we're gonna basically sculpt an entire swamp onto this plastic. We'll never use it again. We won't be able to reuse it for anything else, but we don't care because we're gonna give you the ultimate Man-Thing figure. Well done. Uh, that's Quicksilver. Oh, here we go. So this is the Red Skull that came from that face-off line as well. So that's 2006. He was paired with Captain America, obviously. Uh, the This came with the regular Captain America, and the maskless Captain America came with basically this figure, but uh, Baron Strucker's head, so you could get like an extra Hydra dude out of it. Ah, here is the regular face-off Daredevil. Strong Daredevil head sculpt. Like, I, I really like that. And, you know, it's a decent frame for Daredevil. It's just, come on, man. Look at those shoulders. And then and then they do this. Because that's normal. That's This is what my deltoids, you know, look like. Ugh. Uh, oh, look at this. So, I don't think this is a, this is not a Marvel Legend. This is from, like, a, a more kid-based toy line. Probably one of the Spider-Man animated toy lines. But this is Nova. Uh, does not have articulation at the elbows. But just, you know, shiny, colorful, fun figure. Hand Ninja. Uh, Hand Ninja came, I want to say, in a two-pack with Electra, Because that actually makes sense. And, you know, we've recently gotten more Hand Ninjas in the Stilt Man build a figure wave and hey way to go Hasbro for putting the extra stilt man leg parts in with the army builder figure thank you that that was exactly what a collector would want to see but if you want to add some more hand ninjas here's some that came out a little bit earlier all right so I love this figure this is such a good Stephen Strange it's not specifically Ditko you know, the creator of Stephen Strange, but it definitely has the Ditko vibe, particularly because, look, he's doing the Ditko fingers. Uh, you know, very classic. I mean, the absolute classic costume. You've got the Eye of Agamotto there. The only problem with this, the cape was so big. Like, it really flares out. It's heavy. It's a heavy, rubbery sort of plastic, and it really flares out to the side. So it's, it's hard to fit him in a display, but this is a figure that with a custom cape, maybe a custom cloth cape, as long as you kept that really cool headdress behind it, would be great. We're way overdue for a classic Doctor Strange. Hopefully that happens this year. But, you know, even the, even those Ditko kind of connected dots, different from Kirby dots, they don't overlap, but great figure. Okay, so here we go. Sentry, once again, can you see it? Can you see the texture there? So what they did was they simply took this body again and used it for Sentry. That's you can tell because of just that that rough texture. Uh, this Sentry he came in this kind of mustard yellow, and he also came in a bright yellow. Sentry was a pretty trippy figure. I mean, he's basically a Superman analog, but the whole gist of it was that he was a lost character. That he was written and, and designed by Stan Lee back in the 60s and was lost and they brought back brought him back as a miniseries as a as a hero that everyone had forgotten. It was a pretty cool concept, but you know, there's only so much you can do with Superman. If you watched my last mystery box, I think that was probably the head 
of Ghost Rider that is missing right here. So maybe we'll have some success. Here's another hand ninja. So here's your classic sort of red hand ninja. The Wasp, one of 800 bazillion thousand outfits for the Wasp. I like the newer ones that have the more translucent wings. Uh, these are thicker, but you know, she's got that cute sort of pixie hairstyle. It's not a bad figure. The, uh, this was a really popular run on the Avengers. She actually wore this costume longer than a lot of costumes, so glad we got a figure of it. This is that same Thor from the earliest days of Marvel Legends. Still good. Okay, I'm always surprised. I do not know how you got it. You know what? Is this a... I think this is a Marvel Select Spider Gwen because those I don't believe those are Marvel Legends hips that are that are on her and and we've seen the the that paint job right there is different. This is not the Marvel Legends Spider Gwen. I told you, build a figure or not build a figures, army builders can't get enough of them. Oh, this is so good. So we have gotten a few more Iron Fists over time, but we have yet to get one as good as this. Look at that. Just look at how great that head sculpt. He's got his dragon tattoo. He's got his slippers on. This is my Iron Fist. I mean, this is what I see when I think of Iron Fist. This is the 70s and the 80s. This is the guy who teamed up with Power Man. This is your Heroes for Hire Iron Fist. Again, we got the bulbous shoulders. And, and look, if you make a new one, I will put it in my display. But until you make one that looks like this, that has this design, I'm keeping this one down in my display. Oh, hey, here he is. You find one, you find the other. Just check out that facial sculpt. I mean, that is a bad mother. Watch your mouth. I'm talking about Power Man. You say this cat is a bad mother. Shut your mouth. I'm talking about Sheriff. Then we can dig it. How about that? Good stuff. Kree Soldier, Army Builder. Uh, we've seen seen this guy face off Daredevil. Uh-oh, I think we know where that goes. Okay, so this is Ronan. So Ronan was a character kind of created during My Brian Michael Bendis' run on the Avengers. Um, it was sort of meant to be like a way to get Daredevil in the Avengers, but then it was um, another, it was a female figure who was also blind. I'm trying to remember what her name was. She was actually really cool. She first appeared in Bendis's Daredevil run. This is like the variant version. There's another one that has like more gold, I think, but that's, that's Ronan. Surely this thing is gonna end up being valuable, this one or the new one. There's no way that Kang doesn't start appearing in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, particularly as we start getting into like the multiverse and stuff. This dude as a time traveler and as a huge villain of the Avengers, he's gotta start making appearance pretty soon. Kang. Okay, Elektra. And they've made a lot of Elektras but this, I'm pretty sure this is the original. This is the first Toy Biz Electra. You can tell because of the neck. Nobody likes these these necks. I don't like them either. But that's what that's what this sweet figure is. So Electra's had some better figures more recently that, that have, you know, stronger arms. Her arms look a little bit, little weak to be an assassin. But there's Electra. Oh, Frank. I'm Frank Castle. If that doesn't look like a first appearance Frank Castle, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, he has got that straight up early 70s slicked back hair. I mean, what a thug, you know? And he's got, he has actually the uh, the skull on his chest looks a little bit closer to John Romita Sr.'s original drawings. I'm pretty sure this came in one of those face-off two packs against uh, um, Jigsaw, but that's your first appearance Punisher Frank Castle figure. You know, not to throw out a bunch of ethnic slurs, so I'm not going to, but Frank. Um, 
Daredevil like in a crossbody. Like he's he's sort of got the thinner body of the Spider-Man Classics Daredevil with the stupid shoulders again. Not really sure what's going on with the the eye black around his mask. Not a not a great one. This one though. This is the very first Daredevil that we got in quote Marvel Legends. This actually came out in the second series of Spider-Man Classics which still basically predated Marvel Legends. Spider-Man Classics began right in 2000, whereas Marvel Legends didn't start until 2002. And this is the same body that they used for Spider-Man. It still works pretty well for Daredevil. The thing that I like is around that time, uh, Joe Casada was drawing Daredevil. It was being written by Kevin Smith, the accomplished filmmaker. Uh, that may be a stretch, but uh, it, it, that's a really Joe Casada head on that DD, and I've, I've always liked that one. Uh-oh. Maskless Zemo. I guess it's pretty obvious why he wears a mask. Oh, here he is. Here's, here's Strucker. So, uh, again, this is, this, is, this is the exact same costume that you saw with the Red Skull, but he's got the Baron Strucker uh, head, and then he's got the, whatever this thing's called, the something claw that he has on his arm. So, you get more Hydra figures this way. I, you know, I've always kind of referred to this as, like, Space Black Knight, because I have no clue what this is supposed to represent, what this, what the hell are these shoulder pads and this, like, crazy, like, futuristic armor that he's wearing? I mean, they did a decent job with the head sculpt. It looks kind of like Black Knight, but the rest of this is, like, I don't know, something out of ROM. Eh, I'm glad they redid this one. Daredevil. Captain Marvel. This is a good figure. So we, we got in the past year a new Captain Marvel from Hasbro, but I still like this one better. The, there's something about that swoop of his, of his hair, something about that head sculpt, and I really like the frame for this Captain Marvel. That's a, that's a really nice Toy Biz action figure that still stands up even today. Moon Knight, the, the thing that's so good about this is the cape. So this, so Bill Sienkiewicz was the artist who really made Moon Knight take off. And, you know, everything was about the crescents. He has the crescent here, he has kind of the crescent here. And so the cape forms a crescent as well. So what I did is I had an extra one of these. I took the cape off and I put it on the new Walgreens exclusive Moon Knight and it looks so good. It looks so much better because that cape is just classic 80s Sienkiewicz Moon Knight. Okay, here's another one where Toy Biz, I think, took a wrestling figure and converted it into a Marvel Legend. This is Namor. It's kind of cool. He's like the 70s Namor. Why on earth we got the 70s Namor in a line called Marvel Legends before we got the legendary shirtless Namor? But, you know, whatever. The problem with this, he's too tall. He He's like just... I think it's because of that wrestling body. He's slightly out of scale with the rest of the Marvel Legends figures. So That's the bottom half of Spider-Woman. Okay, here's another uh, Ghost Rider, obviously. But you see how much thicker this one is? Thicker through the chest. I mean, uh, of course, the jaw doesn't open. Cool flame effect. Cool skull. But I still think I like... Oh, it's down at the bottom. But I still think I like this one better. I think I like, I like the open jacket. I like the thinner frame. I like some of the details on his, on his motorcycle pants. I'm going to choose this one as, as the better Ghost Rider. And you got to forgive me. I am not a Ghost Rider expert, but this is obviously some Ghost Rider bad guy. Let's call him Bucktooth or Rib Attack, Rib Attack Ghost Rider enemy, whatever the heck these things are supposed to be. Way to go on the spikes, though, dude. Oh, and he's got, like, a fire mullet. Okay, new name. This guy is now Fire Mullet. Awesome. I like him a lot better. Then we've got an Ultron part. Everybody needs... Look, I can lift them. Haha, <laughs> I'm worthy. I can lift the Molniers. So there you go, guys. Another successful mystery box accomplished. Check back in for carbon scoring. We got more and more fun. We just posted a video of my entire Marvel Legends collection. You can check out a link to that right there. And if there's anything else, if you've got any questions, if there's a question about one of these figures you saw, please put it in the comments. Otherwise, 
We'll see you soon on our next carbon scoring video.